I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on VMware. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on VMware. So what we're going to do first is show you a list of the compatible versions of VMware for the R430 server. Now, I will note this is as of right now to date. I'm sure there will be stuff in the future that comes out. So if there is something that uh, comes out and is compatible, do us a favor, drop a note in the comment section to help users down the line. Uh, but what we will be doing in this video as a whole is updating it to, or is up Upgrading our server to VMware ESXi 703, which is the third update. And again, I'm sure there will be future updates as well, but that's what we'll be doing in this video. So what we will do as a whole is we will download the VMware ISO file. We will uh, use a program called Rufus to create a bootable USD, bootable USB to put that ISO file onto. And then we will show you how to actually log into the web interface. So we're going to show you all the steps in between and the installation steps as well. So let's just go ahead and hop in and we'll show you right now. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install VMware ESXi. Specifically in this video, we're going to go ahead and install VMware ESXi 7.0. I will say, whether you're doing an earlier version or a newer version, the actual installation process is very similar. And in fact, you could probably use this video if you wanted to install VMware 6.0, 6.5, 6.7 or if you wanted to go newer and install one of the um, version 8 editions, um, this video will have a very similar set of steps and you'll probably be able to figure it out with this video. But first thing we're going to do is we're gonna create a bootable USB drive. In order to do this, you need to go ahead and download the VMware ISO file from the description. If you want to go directly to the VMware ESXi website, you can go ahead and do that as well. And you may, you'll have a little bit more options on what you want to download. Um, but I will note that you may have to create an account before you can do this. So you can go ahead and just go to that link in the description. Um, it'll automatically download that ISO file and then it'll save you a trip from going to the VMware website. But once you go ahead and download that VMware ISO file, you want to go ahead and download a program called Rufus. Rufus is the program that we're going to use to create this bootable USB drive. And in order for us to boot into the VMware installation, we have to create this bootable USB drive. So once we've installed Rufus, you can go ahead and open the Rufus exe file. It'll go ahead and bring up this window right here. So the first thing we want to make sure is that the USB drive that we want to turn into a bootable USB is selected under device. Now what we want to do is click on select and then now we want to select the VMware ISO file. And then we can go ahead and click on open and then click on start. So this warning will indicate that um, if you go ahead and proceed with this process, it will remove all the data that's on that drive. So if you're okay with that and are willing to proceed, you can go ahead and press on okay. And then this will go ahead and start that process of creating that bootable USB drive. So this may take a little bit of time. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through this. And then once it's done, we'll go ahead and eject the USB drive and then plug it into our server. And then we can go ahead and start that installation process. All right, so once we've plugged that USB drive in our server and we booted it up, we wanna go ahead and press F11 during post so we can enter the boot manager. Once in boot manager, we want to go ahead and press one shot UEFI boot menu. In here, we wanna select our bootable USB drive and then doing so will load us into that VMware ESXi installation. Loading into the installation itself will take a little bit of time, so we'll fast forward through this, um, but all it's gonna take is a little bit of waiting. And once it's done loading, we will get a screen right here that will say, welcome to the VMware ESXi installation. But essentially what we want to do is just go ahead and click on enter so we can go ahead and continue. Now we want to press F11 so we can accept the end user license agreement. 
Now it's gonna scan for all available devices for us to actually install this onto. So at the very top, we have our device, um, which is actually a few drives that's configured in a RAID array via our PERT controller. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select this. You'll then get a message that says that it may be containing existing data. As long as you're okay with possibly losing that data, go ahead and continue. We now want to select a keyboard layout. Now we want to create a password that we're gonna to use to log into the hypervisor. So this can be anything you want it to be. I just recommend you picking something that is not easy to guess so you can be secure. And then the final step is pressing F11 right here so we can actually install the hypervisor. Installing may take a little bit of time, so we'll fast forward through that and then we will proceed. So once everything has been installed, we'll get a message right here that says installation complete and that it has been successfully installed. So now what we want to do is we want to remove that USB drive that we put in there or any other type of installation media that you use to install this. Um, and then we want to press enter so we can reboot our server. Once our server reboots, we will automatically boot back into VMware ESXi, and then we'll just give it a second while it boots fully. And once it's fully finished loading and booting into VMware ESXi, the way you can tell is that towards the middle of the screen, you will have two IP addresses. One will be a DHCP IP address, IPv4, and then the other will be static IPv6, right towards the middle of the, or the center of the screen. And these are the IP addresses that you're gonna use to actually enter into your web browser so you can log into the web interface. And the web interface is where the core functionality of the operating system lives. That is where you're going to go to create virtual machines and manage virtual machines. The actual piece of software that's running on the server, you can't really do a whole lot with it. You can view logs and adjust some settings, but that's about it. But if you want that full functionality of this hypervisor, you wanna log into that web interface, you wanna type in the IP address and use that password you set earlier, and that's how you can go ahead and get started. Later in the series, we'll show you how to create a virtual machine in VMware ESXi. Specifically, we'd be creating a Windows Server virtual machine. So if you're interested to see how to do that, go ahead and stay tuned towards the end of our series. And if you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in buying a custom-built Dell, HP, Super Micro Server, um, or even some Intel Scalables, AMD Epics, AMD Ryzen servers, uh, we got plenty in stock and we'd be more than happy to hear what kind of a configuration you're looking for. So if you're interested, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That is sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, take care.